Hey there everybody, Joe here. Thanks for watching my video again. I'm doing my last touches to this, this uh, wave scene. There's a lot of things that I'm trying to be conscious of at the same time. Uh, so I'm, I'm thinking of what the colors should be doing at every stage of lighting. And to explain that briefly, I have the blue color shifting toward yellow, which is green. Toward yellow means green, it doesn't mean yellow as the sunlight blasts through it, because this is what happens with waves, that blue uh, becomes greener as, as it gets lit up. So this is the area where I'm looking through the most water, and so that's where that effect is going to be the most, because the, the water is what's changing the color of this light toward uh, green. So, so that's where I have the most green. As it comes this way, I'm looking through less and less water, just like if you look up at the sky, the more you look straight overhead, the more you're looking uh, through a, a thinner atmosphere directly toward outer space, right? So the sky is darker straight overhead, and it's more the color of the sky atmosphere uh, as it's illuminated. As you look out toward the horizon, you're looking through it at an angle. Same with this wave. Here, uh, I need to see more color because I'm looking through so much more water than here. I just want it to look like, you know, maybe it's, it's two or three feet thick. And, and, and I'm just looking straight at the sky through all of this clear water. So, I have this effect of blue turning to green and that gradient going this way, I want to combine with another gradient of it all getting more the sky color as it moves this way. So this also is doing the blue to green, but combined with orange, which makes it all just grayer. So as I move my green this way, you can see it's a grayer green. Uh, just a, a much less intense green as I go this way. And then I, I go from green to grayish green to orange a, as it moves this way. And that's the gradient that I get to create the effect. So I'm trying to be conscious of that while keeping the direction of my little, little uh, water, my waves, my little tiny waves, all my ripples in this big wave. I, I've got direction represented with those. So I've got perspective represented by the direction of my ripples. That's what I'm trying to say. And so I've been, you know, redoing this and redoing this. And I landed on this. This is a pretty new technique for me that I want to show you. I landed on this technique after trying a lot of different things. And so I've, I've said in the past, you know, I've, I've mentioned this, but never really did a lot of demonstrating of it. I don't think you can either paint the reflection first and then paint the deep watercolor that's that's showing through the the front face of the waves on top of it which is what i'm going to do or you can paint the deep watercolor first and then the reflection over the top that's what i did all down here so watch i'm painting the reflection color first and i'm going to make sure i make that dark enough i got to try to match it this is the way i do all my all my pictures i, I just do it in little blocks i get asked a lot how do you deal with the fast drying paint I, I put it on heavy enough, so I'm not spreading this all around. You know, I'm, I'm keeping it heavy enough, it's not gonna dry too fast. I'm even adding a little water because I know I need time to put my, my little ripple shapes over the top of this. And then everything I do in my paintings is a system of color. It's a back and forth system that I have memorized so that I don't have too hard of a time coming back and just matching over it. Okay, so then when I take this corner, see this corner, now watch how this makes contact. I'm gonna just curl it this way and it gets these little tiny diamond shapes and, and it just puts them right, right into that over the top of this reflection color. And, and I'm gonna be honest, this is hard. You know, I'm, I'm having a hard time. My hands aren't even that steady. And so getting these, you know, at just the right angle, which matters a lot, angle, angle is, is a, a real difference maker with water because you know a, a long sheet of water you, know, you have this far distance of this this blanket of water you have a very consistent angle of, of waves on there and and when you take your brush and you you create different angles it immediately suggests a different perspective or a different movement of the water so I, I feel like so much of our visual interpretation of what water is doing is based on the angles that we see in the overall texture 
making that rippled surface. So I'm real careful about the angle of these brush strokes. Okay, so now I'm going up here, and what I want to do, I'm going to put a little more blue in here first. This is just pure phthalo blue, really, you know, the equivalent of phthalo blue in a big house paint can. And I, I'm going to, you know, crowd this together a little bit more. Maybe there's a few of these that are that are merged together. I don't want to have quite so much reflection on this, but what I wanted to do was make this swooping out more this way because the overall shape of a wave is, is not too often very circular, but more oval, kind of like this back in here. It's oval this way. So that top, you know, it, it leans this way on that main body of the wave, but then that top gets, gets shot over this way, creating kind of an oval shape. And I was missing that. You can see how this looks more like an even circle. And to me, that doesn't look as good as this, this more oval swoop here. So now I want to get my green. So phthalo green, phthalo blue, and phthalo green. You know, it's like the magic combo for these turquoise waves. I'm going to put that over the top of these. And so I, I did that same technique here and here. That was one of the last things I did on the time lapse video. And so now I'm moving far enough to the left, it's probably time to start using a not so pure green. So now I'll switch to blue with a little bit of yellow in it. A blue and yellow makes a green that is not as intense as a green paint, a green pigment. So I can, I can mix blue and yellow in order to get a grayer green or, or to get my first, my first stage of less intense greens as I move this way. Uh, maybe I'll, do I need to do it? I don't know. This is pretty intense green right there. Maybe I'll hold off, do it on the next, next section instead. Yeah, because this, this looks pretty all right. <clears throat> pretty all right. When did I start saying that? Pretty all right. <laughs> People rub off on you all your life. You know, I'm 40 now. I'm 40. Can you believe that? I just turned 40 on August 5th. And one thing I have just come to accept is that the people I spend my time with rub off on me and inevitably I start talking like them, whether I like it or not. Somebody got me saying that's pretty all right at some point. <laughs> there, I like the way that came out. You know, as a, to me, this angle is, is much more attractive and it, and it makes my double wave more believable. You know, that top looks like it's swooping over a little more realistically. So I'm going to do the same thing here. You can see the difference of these angles. These are going down like my perspective is looking straight at that way. But that sideways swoop kind of adds better perspective and brings this top section back further than the lower section. So it looks like this has a better swoop as well. Let's try that again. So, so I'm going to do my red color. This is almost done, this picture. So really, I can just add red to either one of these colors. This is a fun shortcut. Just adding red to the blue or the green, whichever color I'm doing the water. And if I wanted to just do reflection on top of it, red and white, the red is just enough to, to uh, mix with it, creating a grayish blue that's, that's a very believable reflection color. So since I'm not doing the reflection on top of that, you know, that was, that was just uh, for reference if you wanted to go reflection on top of blue, but I'm going blue on top of reflection, so I'm just going to mix my reflection color right now, just, just mix it the color that I want it to be. That's close enough right there. And so next, I'm going to start putting my deep water color in there, so I'm going to pop open my yellow because this is where I need a little bit less pure of a color. So I've got a tiny bit of yellow in this blue, and you can see that it's a, a deeper green. By the way, blue and yellow makes a better dark green than anything. Better dark green than green and black, believe it or not. That is if you use a real deep blue. That seems to be the case. Okay, I'm going to do, do 
Do some more of these. I need some bigger waves too because this is this is closer. But I really want to swoop it over here to the left. And then as I get further down on this wave, I'm going to use more of just my just my blue. So I didn't add quite as much yellow to this. I feel like I'm too much of a perfectionist with, with the, uh, you know, with the accuracy of each brush stroke. I'm really trying to just get them right in the right spot. In the end, it is, I don't think there's a very big payoff for that. It's just, I just like to say that I can, you know. So this is the painting that I'm going to use as a model for the faster painting I'm going to do for the for the uh, live show. So on the 7th, which is this coming Saturday, and uh, if, you're watching, <laughs> if you're watching this video months from now, then just ignore that advertisement for the live show because it's probably already here on YouTube, but I'm gonna do a live show and I'm gonna paint a picture just like this, but with much less detail so that we can cut straight to the effects, how to, how to achieve these effects quickly. And you know, just just what are the, the color combinations that cause this wave to look transparent at all these all these different stages, these different angles, and the foam, how you get the effect of the foam versus the reflection. You know, I, I want to just do a good job of, of explaining all that. And I'm gonna do it live. And so the link below will take you to my website and the people who are already signed up, there's already a, a number of people signed up and they paid 40 bucks. I have to make this one $40 to join. So, so uh, you know, keep your eye on the Mural Joe channel for other free live show opportunities. But this one, this one uh, had a special purpose. We were raising money for my brother's film that he's making, it, which I'm very excited about. I really want to see that really want to see that film get made and so we raised some money and we're going to do a live show and it's going to be a lot of fun i i hope that it turns out a really useful video for everybody to to reference for these these uh, kinds of effects i always want to challenge myself with with new combinations of the things that i've found you know, in my research, I, I just, this, this, is, this, is my, this is my life, this is my job. I constantly research what, what it is that makes this effect, you know, and, and so in this case, it's, you know, big transparent wave and in front of the sunset, what is it that causes it to look so transparent? And can I do that? You know, based on the things I studied, I should be able to make this effect of foam here in clear water here with this color light shining through it and the hue shifting as I should be able to do that. And so this, this painting is the experiment. And so, you know, I did run into <laughs> quite a few redos along the way, which gives me a, an opportunity to work through the kinks on this more complex picture before, before I go trying to say how it works in front of everybody. <laughs> So this is just yellow and black, which makes even a even a grayer green. Also, uh, if you if you add enough yellow to it, it's a yellower green, of course. And so as I'm shifting toward this much yellower color, I can just use black and yellow for that green. So I'm fading from a blue yellow green to this black and yellow green as I move to the right here. And this whole thing can just be done with little little strokes of paint that are not blended. None of this really has to be blended, I don't think. I just like to blend paint, you know, and get things as, as soft and lifelike as I, as I can, because I just enjoy that challenge. But, but I don't feel like that's what makes the picture. You know, I, I really think it's just, just the placement, the composition and the placement of the colors, I think are, are much bigger influences on on the picture. I'm going to adjust this little wave right here too because I, I uh, just think it'll look better if it's not this long, smooth, this looks real cartoony to me. 
nothing wrong with cartoony. Just not what I'm going for. So here I'll put, you know, it really hardly needs anything. It's just, just kind of shifting this way over, over this direction. So I could use that same, you know what, why don't I use that same technique, same thing. Great opportunity to practice what I've been preaching here. Let's get, <laughs> I, I'm taking the lids off my paint. I, I started packing it all up, looked at the final shot in the camera. This, this is a common scenario for me. Looked at the final shot and then I better check if the microphone's on too. Good. <laughs> Can't tell you how many videos I've sent to my brother to edit that have no audio. So I didn't turn that microphone on. So yeah, I look at the final shot and then when I see it small, this is why, you know, having a camera on your work is, is really, uh, really helpful. You, you see things when it's all shrunk down into one little spot, you, you see the entire composition. And, and, and um, you know, I don't know a lot about composition or how to define it, but seeing it all together in one little spot, you, you see what you like and what you don't like is my point. Okay. So let's grab some blue and you know, we had this just right in line with this. So I'm just going to bump it over here. We'll put a couple waves. We'll put one there. We'll make it a few. Dark wave right there. There, now all I have to do is, if I was doing reflection over the top, I would do all my reflection strokes and then blend the top edge of those strokes. Now, since I'm doing opposite, since I'm doing the, the water, not the reflection, I'm gonna blend the bottom edge of each of these strokes so that it looks like these waves are rising up out of this reflective water. Kind of scraped that one away a little bit. The paint was real heavy. So what you're seeing right now is me overdoing it and losing the effect of the waves. So let me put this one back in. A little bit of green and white. If I want it to look like this wave is just high enough to catch a little bit of that sunlight. Yeah, I like that. How about this one? Now to finish it off, I'll just remix that reflection color, a little bit brighter. So, you know, you can see I've got the brighter colors. I, I mix uh, gray violet for orange mixing with blue to simplify these colors. You know, it's a lot of blue with a lot of orange. And so I do a gray violet, very common reflection color on water. And so then as it gets brighter, it just needs to get more like this orange color. So I can just do it in stages. I'm, I'm going to mix a color with red and hardly any yellow. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to, I'm going to switch it up. You know what a grayish orange is? It's brown. So I can make a really good uh, reflection color, a nice highlight color by just using brown and white. And I also used brown. Uh, if, you, if you're watching back on the time lapse, I used brown in here to get to get this color again you know as it's shifting toward the more orange color as it's getting brighter it still is a very gray version of, of that orange because of all the blues that are mixing so i can just use brown when i want that effect okay brown and white scrap that red mix right there this is going to be my highlight color i need more white Getting the right hue is one thing, getting it to the right brightness is the next. Just little dots in here to, and I'm gonna be careful to just put these where I already have reflection color established. And do just a little more white because I know that's gonna darken as it dries.
Oh, oh, oh.